According to B.F. Skinner, if I can find the appropriate punishment to motivate Missy, there's no limit to what she might be able to learn. But what might that punishment be? Whip her with a rubber hose? No, that sounds like a recipe for tendonitis. Administer small electric shocks? Tricky. If I get the voltage wrong, I could spend the rest of my life in an institution for the criminally insane. Or, I inflict harm on the object she loves more than life itself. Celeste, you're about to become part of scientific history. All right, everybody, welcome to the 1990 East Texas Baptist Olympics. <laughs> Because we're in the pool of water. Anyway, I want to welcome our little sister, Veronica Duncan, who I will be Duncan. <laughs> Sorry, I can't turn it off. And I also want to welcome George Cooper, who has recently found his way to the Lord. Howdy. Praise Jesus. Are you ready to learn some advanced calculus? Nope. Be right back. Take your time. Veronica. Do you trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? I do. <laughs> it's upon your profession of faith that I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Let's try this again. Would you be ready to learn some advanced calculus if it saves Celeste's pigtails? What are you doing? Put her down. Not until I modify your behavior. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Sheldon, I'm warning you. Walking, are you feeling motivated? Very. Care to explain yourself? I was trying to motivate Missy to expand her intellectual horizons. By torturing her Cabbage Patch doll. Well, it's not like I shocked her with electrodes, which was an option. Enough! To be clear, I meant to shock Missy, not the doll. That would be ineffective. Enough! And you! Getting baptized just to kiss a girl? What were you thinking? Sounds like you know what I was thinking. Well, you are both grounded. Is that any good? I'm afraid not. I failed to make a single friend. That sucks. I have a tough time making friends, too. The worst part is it was important to my mom. My parents pressure me about making friends all the time. So you understand what I'm going through. Oh, I read that book. It's excellent. Are you into rocketry? I started with water propulsion, worked my way up to solid fuel, then went back to water after I set our garage on fire. <laughs> nice. I also tried to get some uranium and build an atomic engine, but that stuff's hard to find. Probably for the best. Well, good luck on your quest to find a friend. You too. If you haven't found one yet, I have good news. My mother asked me to ask you if you'd like to join us for dinner. Why? I was hoping you'd know. Hey, Kale! Everybody stay calm. Just a normal day, just a normal dinner. Can I eat in front of the TV? No, you can eat in front of Sheldon's friends. Oh. I know what fudge means, and you are right on the edge, young lady. Welcome. So, uh, 
Pam. What kind of name is that? Vietnamese, sir. Sure. You don't want to spend a little time over there. Army. Your mom's name isn't Kim Lee, is it? No, sir. Good. I mean, yeah. It's a small country. So, Mary, how's that food coming? Almost. So Vietnam, like in Rambo. Yes. That's a cool movie. Yes. Are you in it? No. Hmm. Why would you think you knew his mom? All right, Tam. I decided I was going to make you a real Texas dinner. Barbecue chicken and brisket. Thank you. Well, I figured you were probably tired of stuff wiggling around on your plate. OK, let's say grace. Now, Tam, when I say Jesus, feel free to say the word Buddha in your head. I'm actually Catholic. Oh, well, that's too bad. Thank you, God, for this food, and bless the hands that prepared it. And thank you so much for Sheldon's new friend. Amen. 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 So, Tam, tell us about your family. What brings you all to Texas? Well, after the American War. You mean the Vietnam War? We call it the American War. Hmm. Anyway, after the war, my father was sent to a re-education camp because he fought on the wrong side. Well, you mean our side? I was trying to be nice. So, for many years, my mother and my sisters and I were very poor and very often didn't have much to eat. Then, when he was released... What'd they teach him at the re-education camp? How to be a communist. Cool, like in Rambo. When he was released, we escaped on a small boat and spent many weeks at sea dodging Cambodian pirates until we reached Thailand. Oh, that's supposed to be a beautiful country. Lovely beaches. I wouldn't know. We were forced to live in a refugee camp where the only thing we had to eat were pigeons and rats. Ha, <laughs> that's a job for hot sauce. Finally, we were allowed to come to the United States and start over in Galveston. My father saved money and bought his own shrimp boat. There's a happy ending, huh? See, kids, when the going gets tough, America provides. It did, until the Ku Klux Klan burned our boat and chased us away. You gonna put a good spin on that one? So we came to Manford and opened up a convenience store. My parents worked 16 hours a day, seven days a week, for very little money. Well, that was depressing. Hey, Moon Pa. I got you a little something to help you get over your fear of animals. A tranquilizer gun? A pet fish. Why? Well, I thought you could start small and then work your way up. Look, it's kind of cute. He doesn't even care that I'm here. I like him. What are you going to name him? Fish. Fish? I'm not ready to get attached. Fish are kind of boring. I know, isn't it great? But you can't even pet him. Maybe we can. Ah! Baby, what's wrong? I tried to pet fish. Ah, he was so slimy. Well, yeah, he's a fish. I put my finger in the top of the tank. Then I touched him, and he bit me. Oh, I'm sure he didn't bite you. I can't breathe. This fish blood is mixing with my human blood. Maybe he was just trying to give you a kiss. No, he hates me. I never want to see him again. Oh, Sheldon, you're being silly. Fish like this don't bite. Look. See? He's harmless. Son of a bitch. <gasps> Dad killed my fish! George! Well, you'll be fine. Just gotta put him back in the bowl. Oh, George. How come Mom's not taking me to school? Because once in a while, your dad wants to spend some time with you, little shell man. Mom's car has a back seat. Statistically, I'm much safer there. Hey, I'm glad you brought up statistically. You think those numbers you talked about for Texas A&M would apply to my JV squad? I don't see why not. Unlike our former principal, math doesn't discriminate. You're not thinking about taking his advice, are you? Never you mind. But he's wrong. Everybody knows you punt on fourth down. Why does everybody knowing something make it right? Because. 
That's what makes this country great. Many years later, my brother would use this same argument in front of a judge. He was still convicted for urinating in a phone booth. Damn it. I'll send in the punting team. Hang on, hang on. What? Let's go for it. Why? We got plenty of time. I know. Still want to go for it. We're on the 12-yard line. Everybody know you punt. Why does everybody know when something make it right? But we're on the 12-yard line, coach. OK. Coach says we're going for it. Stupid brother. What? Nothing. Power left jumbo. One, two, one, two. Ready? Ready. And your wolves are going for it on fourth down. What the hell? Hunt. Statistically, they're better off going for it. Says who? My little boy. That's why everybody punts. That was just plain foolishness. Your little boy is a real genius. Well, actually, he is. Play fourth down. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, can I send in the punt team? Coach. And they're going for it again. What the hell, punt? You want me to tell you about the tax refund they got from the IRS? <laughs> Beat my girlfriend, Connie Tucker. Connie, did you grow up in Texas? Took my first bath in a 10 gallon hat. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You're as funny as you are beautiful. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you were sweet talking my date right in front of me. Hello. Hi, Dr. Linkletter. It's Connie Tucker. Connie, to what do I owe the pleasure? I need a favor. Of course. Should we discuss it over dinner? I'll take a rain check on that. I was hoping that my grandson could join in your physics class until John is, uh, back. From the mental hospital? Yes. The one he never told you he'd been in before? Yes. A curious ethical choice on his part, if you ask me. Can he take the class or not? Of course. I never taught a child before. Is he potty trained? have always been impressed by me. Alrighty then. And my new college professor was no exception. You'd think it was my once-in-a-generation intellect, but it was more than that. There was my wicked sense of humor. By maximizing entropy. Yes, Sheldon. Entropy. It isn't what it used to be. Plus, when things got heavy, I was always ready with a fun fact to lighten the mood. Fun fact. Did you know that the ancient Incas stored bureaucratic records on knotted strings called Kipu? Q-U-I-P-U, Kipu. Whatever the reason, I was clearly his favorite student. Connie, what a treat it is to see you. Look at him smile. He couldn't get enough of me. But Sheldon, if you're interested, an old friend of mine is giving a lecture next week on the mathematics of robotic communication. Really? Yes. If your grandmother's willing to drive you, maybe we can all go. Make a night of it. Oh, we'll be there. Uh, uh, wait, we, we don't even know what night it is. Thursday. Oh, Thursday might be a problem for me. Thursday's perfect for you. Wonderful. You don't know that. Yes, I do. Mondays, you have bowling. Tuesdays, water aerobics. Wednesday, salsa dancing. Fridays, you bring me here. Your Thursday was wide open, but not anymore. We'll see you then. Excellent. Should we plan on dinner beforehand? Ooh. Just hold on. Can I speak to you for a moment? Grown-ups need to talk. That wasn't made clear. You're asking me out in front of my grandson, so I can't say no. You saw through that. You think you're pretty smart. Well, I do have two PhDs and a date with you on Thursday. I, I just can't wait. When I step in, I'm doing it wrong. And when I don't step in, she yells at me. 
I hear you. So Darlene does the same thing with you? No, but I'd hate it if she did. That sounds awful. So what do you two fight about? You know, normal stuff. Who loves the other one more? Whose turn it is for a foot rub? Oh, the other day, we did argue about which way the toilet paper should hang. Who won? I don't remember. We just ended up making love on the bathroom floor. Thank you, Wayne. This has been real helpful. When was the last time you took Mary out on a date? I couldn't even tell you. That poor woman. Hey, you're supposed to be on my side. I'd like to be, but you're not giving me much to work with. Hey. Smells like you had a good time. How'd you like to go out for dinner on Friday? Just you and me. Why? Because you're my wife. I was your wife last Friday and we didn't go to dinner. Mary, I'm asking you on a date. Okay. Is that a yes? Sure. All right, then. If you did something stupid, I'm going to find out.